Hello everyone, welcome back to the Aurelia City in City Skylines. Today we will continue building in the center of the city, right next to the main train station that we reworked last time. Two episodes back we started building the Canal Valley. On one side of it we built the commercial block, we also did a residential block using the round green city's buildings, which turned out looking really, really good. Today we will complete the valley on all sides. We are going to do some more residential buildings on multiple levels, we will do like a tiny waterfall and all those kinds of things. So let's go. And we are going to start right away with doing the second side of this canal valley. So it's going to be formed using, well, at least the first level is going to be formed using these residential buildings. Now we have seen these before. These are the futuristic buildings that form at least partially that uh, if you remember a couple of episodes back, well, maybe quite some time ago, we did that medium density residential area on top of that hill. It was kind of, uh, you know, green compared to the rest of the places on the other side of the river, you know, in that second half of the city, in the suburbs. Now, I really like these buildings and I think that they are absolutely perfect for exactly this, uh, this situation because they have kind of that uh, angled uh, wall. It's not really a wall, it's kind of just balconies that are extending you know, in the first floor, they are just much uh, bigger than in the other floors. I think it goes like four floors up and then it's just a vertical wall. But uh, it kind of creates the impression that uh, maybe these buildings could be uh, placed in some kind of a line. Not necessarily like this, you know, without any space between them. But uh, just uh, creating the idea that they are just uh, kind of forming into some sort of a spire or some, some sort of a wall, right? So that's a perfect element to really uh, start with when doing some kind of these vertical places because obviously the valley is very, uh, very deep uh, below the terrain. It's, uh, it's, it has its own like a network of paths and everything. And uh, on top of it, there's obviously going to be some kind of different level with either uh, just roads connected to all these networks or, you know, something else. We are going to see that in just a minute. Anyway, uh, I also wanted to finish uh, this uh, this level of the valley because I'm not sure if you guys remember, but uh, in the episode, in the two episodes back where we started this valley, I think I was talking a bit uh, about some kind of plans that I have for this style, general style. And I would really like to continue doing these canals, but they are going to be positioned much higher than this one. If you remember, right at the start of the Aurelia series, we did that, uh, you know, starting from the main train station, we did that uh, first canal that was just uh, on, the, on the same level as the trams. That's exactly this level, by the way. And it had some residential areas all around it. And eventually it stopped and there was like, a, like a, some kind of a stair area with uh, lots of planters and different kind of vertical planters and, you know, retaining walls. And uh, then it continued to a second... Uh, second valley, which also had a canal, which was like a middle valley because I decided that I'm going to do a third one later. So this is exactly the kind of style that I would like to continue with. And this might actually not be the last first level canal that I'm going to do. So maybe I'm actually going to do three sets, maybe four, depending on how I'm just going to continue uh, with all of this. But, uh, you know, definitely two because I'm already doing the second one here but uh, maybe three sets of these uh, tiered canals I'm going to do. But uh, what is this? This is basically the edge, the end of the first level, or maybe actually the start of the first level if you are looking at it from the perspective of the flowing water. Now, this water is, uh, you know, it's kind of, you know, staying still inside the canal in the game, but I'm thinking that it might be just going to some sort of a underground, like piping or river or whatever stream, and uh, joining the main river because uh, I think I can already spoil it a tiny bit that I am planning some uh, major map changes that are going to extend that uh, upper uh, lake. You know, Aurelia has two dams, two basic water levels. The one that's in the, in the river, the, the main one, and it also has the second water level. That's where the island city is and that smaller dam is keeping that level there. So the second level the second lake, I'm thinking that all of these canals are originating from there. And the water is actually flowing through these canals all the way to that first level, which is the river, uh, which is the river level. 
So I haven't really built any kind of uh, canal entrances or exits, outlets, I'm not really sure what they, they would be called, uh, into the river. But uh, I'm just thinking that they are there, you know, underground somewhere, something like that. But maybe when I'm going to do the third sets of these canals, I am actually going to make it connected all the way to the river. If you remember, the main interchange area has like a little bay in the river on the side of it. So maybe I'm thinking I'm going to do something like that in there. It should be really interesting to just uh, plan that out in the future. But anyway, that's uh, that's going really well into the future right now. So that's just going to be like a very distant plan right now. But uh, first we need to focus on all of these places. So this uh, main road, this is the one that's originating right on that roundabout uh, with the sunken tram station, if you remember. It's kind of an important roundabout connection. It basically connects all the way to that uh, main interchange and then it kind of radiates these main uh, avenues into different parts of the city. So this one is going to be very important. Uh, I kept it com going completely straight and uh, in this particular area it's going to divide the different levels of the canals. So in here, down here, it's going to end this one and then it's going to start uh, the, the middle level. And the middle level is then probably going to just uh, end somewhere, you know, similarly to this one. It's also probably going to twist uh, more towards that lake that I talked about. I also wanted to create some kind of waterfalls to kind of symbolize that those levels are connected. Uh, you, you know, the water connected and the water is actually flowing through them. So I recently downloaded finally those uh, waterfall props. Uh, it was not exactly visible in here, but they are actually animated and you are going to see that in the cinematics. I prepared like a nice shot of that little little area where, uh, where there are the pedestrian paths. Uh, uh, right below the waterfall so people can just you know walk around there. It's kind of a very nice uh, place to just chill. So you know not not a bad idea at all to end the canal using this technique because otherwise I would just have to put some kind of a wall or some kind of stairs like I did before and I just want to use some kind of different elements in here, right? Anyway, we are now on the second level of that uh, of that edge of the valley or the side of the valley. So those uh, buildings uh, on the right there, I'm not sure what they're called, something something golden, mile, something complex, I'm not really sure. Uh, I, I downloaded those buildings just ages ago. I think that I had them right at the start of the Aurelia project and I really wanted to place them somewhere because again, they have that element where partially on one side they are kind of angled. So it just creates the idea that you might be able to place these buildings in a line and it's kind of going to form this nice vertical element, right? So that's exactly what I wanted to do. At first I experimented with uh, maybe putting these buildings on the first level, but then I finally decided to do those futuristic buildings because they are smaller and you can just uh, not really have them in just one line, but you can kind of combine them into like 45 degree corners and it's just going to look and it's going to fit the place much better and just kept these uh, larger buildings to the second level. I finally decided to do it uh, just like this. So two instances in a row and then kind of copied uh, the other way around on the other side and uh, one side or one face, one shorter face is just going to be covered with that another uh, futuristic building, which is kind of that uh, tower, the spire. And that one I had to convert into procedural objects because I kind of wanted to have it shaped a bit, uh, you know, differently and to cover the edges of those buildings. I was kind of thinking of maybe adding a third level, maybe covering it over the highway or something like that, but I just wasn't sure at this point what exactly I'm going to build uh, over the highway. I was experimenting with maybe some uh, roads going over the highway. Maybe the highway would be in like a, like a valley, in like a trench or something. I would artificially just raise the terrain, but uh, I, kind of was thinking about building that third set of these canals and maybe that's actually going to be on that other side of the highway and uh, it's going to be much lower obviously. So doing some kind of uh, terrain changes, uh, committing to some kind of terrain changes at this point would probably be a bit, uh, bit problematic with that uh, project going further. So I just decided to end what, whatever we are building today by that main avenue road and uh, later I'm just going to have uh, like a better, like a, like a playground for, for doing something, something else in the future, right? 
So today is going to be all about finishing and filling all of this between that main road, this one that goes from the roundabout and uh, what we already had, right? So it's nicely going to tie everything together. So in here I just uh, slapped a couple of various residential office buildings to form these kind of messy high density blocks, something that we have done in the core of the city many times before. So we are obviously continuing with that style, so it looks similar. I used that uh, triangular building there to kind of uh, put it on the side of the roundabout where the highway just goes over it because there was a nice space that could be filled with, with that. And I also used the procedural object version of that building, actually two of them, to make it uh, customized, just scale it up so that it's exactly going to fit that triangular shape. And uh, the second instance is just coming from that base. It's slightly scaled down and uh, the road that was going from the second level just goes inside the building. And uh, it's probably just some entrance to the building, like a parking garage or something like that, right? I don't think I really bothered uh, creating any kind of uh, entrances there. It's just uh, like a decorative road because uh, I really do have a problem with these kinds of uh, roads that are just uh, on different levels and just going nowhere. So I'm trying to really end them in some places. That's why I didn't really want to commit into just creating like a dead end bridge over this highway because later I would just need to figure out where I'm going to take it because uh, I wouldn't really have any kind of plans right now. One good thing about uh, these residential buildings that are forming the first level, as you can see, they can be very nicely uh, made to fit the second level. The second level is obviously made using this road, which is like a like an edge of, uh, of the first level buildings. And I was just placing that first road or the first level, sorry, second level road. It's kind of uh, confusing with the levels at this point, I guess. Uh, the asphalt road here on the top, I was just positioning it so it's going to fit the backs of, uh, of all these different uh, kinds of structures at the top of these buildings because these buildings' roofs are not exactly flat. They have uh, some kind of, uh, I don't know, flats in there, like different apartments with balconies or whatever. So eventually I made it I made it uh, work and just a couple of procedural objects, some railings and, and uh, pavement surfaces to just fill that. And it was perfectly fine just... Uh, you know, leaving it like that. This uh, space in here was just left open and I finally decided to just fill it with uh, some green and uh, just some pedestrian connections and it's just going to be a park. Maybe I could later, but like I said, I'm not really sure what's going to be over the highway, over the main road below the highway. So maybe later I could provide some kind of a pedestrian bridge maybe, or maybe some kind of a road that's going to connect this all together. But right now I'm just not really sure. By the way, the highway was kind of turning away from that main road that's going beneath it. And it just, uh, you know, created that empty space between it. And I was really happy to find out that the Prague office building that uh, I have used a couple of times uh, already in the city, I think, was actually a perfect fit there. So that's going to look very, very nice uh, how exactly it fits that particular shape between those, uh, between that infrastructure. So. That's always satisfying when buildings fit like that very nicely. Anyway, that's almost done. Uh, the detailing on the second level is completely done actually. So let's now go back into the valley and let's uh, just uh, completely do it how it's supposed to be. So I decided to really just do it exactly the same way as on the, as on the other side of the, of the canal and uh, cover all of these surfaces with just this gravel, which is just like a decorative surface. I didn't really want to have it as grass too much because I would need to provide some pedestrian paths anyway, gravel probably, and uh, you know, it would just uh, be uh, like, why do that? You know, when I have it in a certain style on the other side, then I kind of want to continue with that. So I'm even using these uh, planters shaped like this, decided to put some like a statue in the center, going to use even the same uh, flowers in the planters, all the benches and uh, oh yeah, these very nice looking street lights that are going to look really, really good in this place. Nicely organic shaped. I really like those. I'm definitely going to keep an eye out for some different places in the city where I could uh, place these, even though I'm kind of terrible when it comes to placing lights because I always forget to do them. But these kinds of open spaces, 
they definitely benefit from lights even during the daytime because it's just something else to to fill the areas it's not necessarily looking that important in here because the lights are concentrated just inside of these planters so if they were not there it's kind of hard to even notice that but uh, especially right next to that uh, commercial block we did some of these lights as well and that definitely improved that entire open space and all these kinds of plazas uh, anywhere else in the city are also definitely benefiting from that by the way the edge of the canal there by the waterfalls i also did those uh, like a perpendicular pedestrian connections one of them is leading to an elevator on one side and the other one is just uh, slowly going up on some kind of a medium slope back into that main road if you remember the highway also has an interchange a highway interchange i think i decided to finally cut it out from the time lapse but i was doing some kind of changes to the interchange and then my game crashed and i decided to not really redo it anymore because again i was not really sure how i'm going to con continue from here so i decided to finally leave it for some uh, different projects anyway moving now back to the second end of the valley that's that's the one closer to the main train station to the center to the center of the city and in here i needed to finish these uh, like a commercial gallery levels right because we had that uh, completely unfinished and i just needed to really uh, first do all these kinds of buildings on the sides to finally have a better idea about the final shape so now that we have that we can easily continue with this and also down below you could have seen i built some kind of a tunnel entrance which is going to connect into those uh, like a messy uh, high density blocks uh, you know towards that roundabout the important roundabout that i talked about it's not really like a tunnel entrance for like vehicles i'm not really sure why i built it i suppose that pedestrians uh, are not even going to be able to use it i'm not really sure how these vanilla tunnels uh, work in this regard but that's not really important pedestrians can enter the first uh, level of the canal valley uh, easily from many different places so that's not really important and i even banned all the vehicles down here so I'm not really sure why I bothered with the, the tunnel. I suppose I just really wanted to, uh, you know, do it uh, properly, proper connection in here, even though it's not going to be used. So that is done. As you can see, I just uh, put the same kind of buildings, really made sure that I'm using all the same styles that I already had because um, already used because uh, it's just going to blend the area together. And it's not going to look like I just built it into separate uh, takes right it's just going to look like a single project okay so that is almost done i'm just going to finish it with uh, putting down some trees as you can see i'm using the trees and bushes quite heavily to cover some like inconsistencies with uh, some different elevation levels and stuff because you know why not why not do it uh, in some some of these uh, places where it's not exactly critical you don't really need some kind of retaining walls there you're just going to cover it with these kinds of detailing elements unfortunately i don't have the before and after shot because well i kind of recorded them but i moved the camera weirdly so it's not exactly the same angle so we will have to just look at the finished result like this as you can see there are there are actually different trams now moving here on this line this is a bit of a mistake these trams are all just going from that underground tram depot that i built uh, earlier because they are returning back to their lines uh, i was just experimenting with some like i mentioned the highway exit and it also had like a temporary tram depot connected to it and i had to delete that so uh, all of these trams just really wanted to go back uh, to their lines because if you delete the depot obviously all the vehicles that originated from it are gone as well right so that was a bit of an easter egg i suppose well not really because i explained it but uh, let's continue so this is the plaza well not really a plaza in that uh, little cut in that uh, first uh, level of those residential buildings i think it was a really good call to use these ones uh, like i said with those partially angled uh, walls and uh, it's just going to really look good really going to reinforce that vertical uh, vertical feeling of this entire place and like I mentioned before, we are going to continue with this uh, valley style. Obviously not with uh, some of these like uh, residential buildings. I'm going to try to really do something else for the different levels of the, of the canals and the third set of the canal that I'm kind of planning on building. Oh yeah, this is the very, very satisfying view 
of those uh, waterfalls, how they are just uh, I'm just working how they are just looking really, really good. I also built with procedural objects like tiny little gates there so that it looks like they are actually flowing some from somewhere. And I really made sure that uh, it's going to be on roughly the same level as the canal or, you know, the, the canal on the, on the second uh, level. So at least it's going to have some continuity between those places. All right. So finally, uh, this is the view from uh, outside of the valley, from the unfinished areas, let's say. And uh, yeah, it's just looking, it's just looking all right. I would really like to maybe use those, uh, those buildings on the top, those angled buildings, those long buildings on the second level, maybe even somewhere else in the city. I don't think that their potential is, uh, is fully gone with this project. So maybe I'm going to still uh, still think about that. In the next episode of Aurelia, we are going to move away from the downtown because I have one particular project that I have sitting on my hard drive unedited for a real long time. It's of course the intersection that I have been building on the live streams long, long time ago, if you have seen that. So we are going to do that. It's going to take us closer to the industrial zone, to the big dam on the big river. And we are also going to stay in that area for a couple more episodes because I want to do, uh, I kind of want to focus on that place, uh, finish it up and move closer to the city and just finish all those areas that we have left open in that particular area. And I suppose that when we are done there, we are probably going to do that uh, big uh, map change uh, video finally. So that's going to be like the last map change and then we're going to go back into the downtown once more and do all these different canals and all the different high density areas all as well. All right. So that's the plans. Thank you for watching today's uh, video from Aurelia. Uh, if you liked it, you can put a thumbs up underneath it, subscribe to the channel and become a channel member. Huge thanks to all the channel members that we currently have. Thanks again for watching. Take care and goodbye.